You can invite somebody to church, but you can't bring the person to church. <laughs> Everything around us that is good is a pointer that the good God is with us. I slept, I woke me up because the Lord sustained me, not because I know how to pray. Because the Lord sustained me. So when you hear testimonies of God's great act, robbers breaking into somebody's house and searching and they, and they didn't like anything to take, it must be God. <laughs> Preservation, protection. Somebody who couldn't leave the hand now being healed, it is God. Yeah. You can't do it, I can't do it. The caller is the door. The call is not the door. Miracle marriages, marriage anniversaries and all that. God is good to us. You know what Jacob said? Genesis 32 verse 10. He said, I'm not worthy of the May 6 and the truth you have shown to me. I crossed the Jordan with a staff. Now I become two bands. Every good thing you can see around you is a pointer to the fact that the good God is still with you. Yeah. Any day you see the breath of God in your noses, it's because God said good morning to you first. Yeah. With gratitude to God for His mercies, for His kindness, for His help, for battles you never know, He fought for you. Lift your voice, lift your hand. For testimony shared and testimony is not shared, let's appreciate this living God. Give him glory. Father, I am not worthy of your mercies. I'm not worthy of your truth you have shown to me. I crossed the Jordan with a staff. I have become two bands. Thank you for answer to prayers. Thank you for multitude you've been drawing. Thank you, Jesus, for confirmation of your word. We can preach, but we cannot confirm it. You confirm the word of your servant before the counsel of your messenger. Thank you for Johnny Mason. Thank you for the first quarter of June 2019. You are good to us. You are good to us. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, ancient of God. It is. Be glorified. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Emmanuel, 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 Your eyes are like the light.
right man. I do what you need to say. of destiny. Answer questions in our hearts. Let no one return a shame. Let today be a turning point day. Thank you Jehovah for positive change of stories in Jesus excellent name. Please put your beautiful heart together for Jesus, for Jesus, for Jesus. And you may please be seated in the presence of the Lord. You are welcome. I have dominion. Congratulations. This is the last Sunday and the last service of the month of March. It is our encounter with destiny service. The God of heaven, you have come to me today, we give you an encounter of a lifetime. Amen. By the grace of God, today we'll be concluding the serial teaching will be gone. The course of the moon, engaging the spirit of faith for dominion. So we're looking at about 5a in this first service. In this encounter with destiny service, God will answer the questions of your heart. Please come with me to Proverbs 19.21. I take my test from there. Proverbs 19.21. There are many devices in the heart, in a man's heart. But the Bible says, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. <laughs> I pray for you, God's counsel for you. Your destiny will stand. There are many devices in the heart of a man. Any man is free to devise anything for you. Any devil can devise anything. But hear me and hear me well. The Bible said that only the counsel of God, the predetermined intent and purpose of God, that shall stand. QED. And God cannot lie. And the scriptures cannot be broken. What is destiny? Destiny is simply God's predetermined counsel. God's predetermined purpose. God's predetermined intent or plan for an individual. God's predetermined counsel. God's predetermined purpose. God's predetermined intent or plan for an individual. And I'm born here to say to someone that regardless of the devices of man, it may even be devices from your father, from your mother, that told you you are an unwanted child. Somebody may have told you you are good for nothing. Nothing good can come out of you. 
If my God allow you to come to this earth, there's a plan for you. There is a purpose for you. There's a counsel of God for you. That counsel will stand. So I don't know what is happening now that doesn't look like that destiny he has for you. Remember that only his counsel will stand. Every destiny that has been altered is being recovered right now. The counsel of the wicked will not stand for you. The counsel of man will not stand for you. Only God's counsel will stand for you. Today I pray that God will give you encounters of destiny. That will establish his destiny for you. That will launch you to a greater part of faith in life and destiny in the name of Jesus. I don't know who I made a vow anywhere that you will never marry. You will never have a child. You will never have a job. You will never be promoted. You will never have progress or success. You will never do well. Maybe they have even told you, okay, train your children. Let's see. Say you have graduate. Let's see them marry. Hey. Every man has a say, but God has a final say. Man may have a say. The devil may have a say, but God has the final say. It is God's ultimate cancer that must stand. And that will stand for you. So it doesn't matter the delays you may have seen, disappointments here and there. Remember that God's cancer is what will stand. I pray for someone here. Your destiny will no longer be altered. Your destiny will no longer be manipulated. Your destiny will no longer be used for kalu kalu. If God has not mismanaged the world he created, you will not mismanage your destiny. Here it is. In life, you may have desires. Your desires are actually your ambitions. But God's desire for you is what is called vision, is what is called purpose, is what is called destiny. God's desire, God's plan for you. Thank God for your devices. Yes, you are permitted to have devices. But always check that your device is in line with the device of God. I have come to believe and I have come to understand that destiny is stronger than a cause. <laughs> People can release verse, enchantment, divination, but if you're a man of destiny, you can't die anyhow. Ask Joseph. They put him in pits. The pit couldn't swallow him. They put him inside Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife said, I must deal with you. He couldn't swallow him. They put him in prison. Prison couldn't take him. He has to get to the palace. That was the original predetermined intent. Jesus was inside boats. The boat tried to capsize. As a matter of fact, the apostles were afraid. Carried not that way perish. When he woke up, he said, wind, peace, be still. You know why? That's not how to die. He must get to the cross. Because his dying on the cross is very, very significant. At the cross, he crushed our causes. There was no other way to die. Many times they tried to stone him to death. Many times they took him to the cliff of the city where the city was built to throw him headlong so that he can scatter. He, going through the midst of them, went his way. Men of destiny don't die anyhow. Look at Paul. They took him and stoned him to death. He shook his body. They thought he was dead. He said, I have not finished my course. My destiny is still there for me to fulfill it. <laughs> You will not die anyhow. No member of this assembly, no member of your family will die before his or her time. You will accomplish purpose in Jesus' name. Isaiah 14 verse 24. The Lord of hosts has sworn, this is a sworn blessing, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. As I have proposed, every genuine manufacturer like God determines the purpose of their product before manufacturing. As I have proposed, as I have thought, so shall it stand. There is no genuine manufacturer that just stands manufacturing. Before manufacturing, they first of all have a plan. And this is what this product is going to accomplish through of us. 
Okay, if you don't understand, we'll have some architects and all that. Ask them. Before this building was put in place, an architect sat down with AkiCAD, AutoCAD, and designed it. As a matter of fact, you can even see the whole house before they started the foundation. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So before God started you, He has already known you. <laughs> He has already known your purpose. So he is saying, as I have thought, as I have purpose, as I have pre-imagined and determined before your father and your mother met, that is what we stand. So any other force trying to do anything against that counsel of God, we command those forces to become null and void. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 For I know the thoughts are that I think towards you Say the Lord thoughts of peace And not of evil To give you an expected end That expected end Is the fulfillment of that destiny You will enter there When Moses was born Moses was a proper child A man of destiny Remember At that time Pharaoh had given message to all the midwives that if you see any Hebrew man, kill him. <laughs> but when Moses was born, they look at this child, they say he's a proper child, who dare not kill this child. They put him inside the river to be floating there. Until Pharaoh's daughter, to show you how destiny works, Pharaoh's daughter came there and said, I like this child. Took him home. He was brought up in the ways of Egypt. He became a prince of Egypt. But before he was born, God knows he's going to be a deliverer for his people. Moses tried to deliver the people by his own hand. He, he, 40 years he suffered for it by trying to accomplish it by his power. But when God appeared in the burning bush and appeared to him, that is how God's going to give somebody an encounter today. <laughs> when God he gave him an encounter in the burning bush, he delivered the people of God sweatlessly. The same Moses that was running away from Pharaoh went back to Pharaoh. He said, Let my people go. <laughs> and if you not let my people go, I will deal with you. And we saw all the dealings until the people left. God's original intent, peoples stood. I don't know who, someone, somehow, sometimes, some things have made your destiny to go crooked. Hear me. God is reversing the irreversible. And God's original intent for you will stand. In the name of Jesus. Now there was a man called Jephthah. Jephthah was born by a lot. That's a minus to his destiny. In quotes. The brothers came and said, Jephthah, you will not have an inheritance in our father's house because you are born by a harlot. They drove him away. To somebody, it looked like destiny shattered. But one day, the Israelites needed somebody like Jephthah to deliver them. Jephthah told them, if I will deliver you, I will rule over you. They said, no problem. We are, your mother is no more a harlot. <laughs> Just deliver us first. And Jephthah made a vow and God helped him to deliver the people of God. And he ended up being a ruler. Somebody that was born of a harlot became a ruler of God's people. Now hear me. I don't know the circumstances of your birth. I don't know the village you came from. It may not even be in the map. But hear me. In as much as God has predetermined and had an original intent and purpose for you. That is what we stand. Yeah. That is what we what? Stand. Precious people of God understand. Talking about the encounter with destiny. That every child of God has a glorious destiny. Say with me, I have a glorious destiny. Say with me, I have a glorious destiny. Romans 8, 29 to 30 For whom he did for know, he also did predestinate To be conformed to the image of his son That he might be the firstborn among many brethren Moreover, whom he did predestinate Them he also called And whom he called, them he also justified And whom he justified, them he also glorified So the end of our calling God is glory I 
divorce you from shame from now every child of God has a glorious destiny in Matthew 11 11 he said very I say unto you among them that are born of women there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he do the mathematics everyone that was born before John the Baptist Daniel Abraham David the Bible said John the Baptist is greater than them but if you are born again child of God you are greater than John the Baptist who is greater than those one that came before him time will fail me to begin to explain to you it took me 10 years to get answer to this and one of the answer God gave to me is that in the Old Testament they never had the spirit upon they never have the spirit within they only have the spirit upon the Holy Ghost will come at times to walk, come upon them and walk. But any believer now, you have both the spirit upon and you have the spirit within. That's why you are greater than those who have gone ahead of you. So you have a glorious destiny. Say now, have a glorious destiny. Number two, every child of God has an enviable destiny in redemption. So that you know what to look for. Your destiny is an enviable destiny. That's why you should not trade it for anything. You should not trade your destiny for money. Your destiny is an enviable destiny. When you see some people doing certain things, they don't understand the value of their life. Have you not heard that even for one, it is, it is what will it profit a man to lose, you know, to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Which means your soul is worth more than the whole world combined together. Every child of God have enviable destiny. Can't trade it for max. Can't trade it for money. Can't trade it to you don't get occultic power. Your destiny is stronger than a curse. Somebody said, I don't understand. Galatians 4, verse 28. Now, we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. As Isaac was. <laughs> Are the children of promise. How was Isaac? Genesis 26 verse 14. And Isaac was envied by the Philistines. A whole nation envied the man. And I've told us here before, if you are not being envied, you have not been blessed. Envy is part of the blessing. He went forward. He became great. He had great struggle. He has taught Sabbath. Then the Philistines envied him. So if you are a child of God, as if Isaac was, we are also children of promise. So you should be envied. So if they are envying you, don't come and tell me, Pastor, pray hot prayer. I don't know why they are envying me. It's part of the blessing. <laughs> Number three. An encounter with God and his word is an encounter with destiny. One of the ways God gives us encounter of destiny is by his word. An encounter with God and his word is an encounter with destiny. First Samuel 3.21 And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So an encounter with the word of God is an encounter with destiny. You know why? Anything you get by light, there's no return match. And Genesis 12, 1 to 3, we saw how God appeared to Abraham at 75 years. Leave your father's house. I'll bless you. I'll make your name great. I bless him that I bless them that bless you. And I'll curse him that cursed you. And Abraham departed very early in the morning. And from that day, Abraham never remained the same. Just that encounter. Abraham never remained the same. He ended up a generational blessing. A generational blessing. In heaven today, we have two fathers: Father God and Father Abraham. <laughs> and two of them mysteriously they are friends because they did what each other did Abraham gave his only begotten son God gave his only begotten son best of the same feather they do what? they flock together why would they be friends? and if Abraham didn't give us Isaac God couldn't have given us Jesus because have to prove it there are two fathers in heaven if you get to heaven you must respect those two fathers Father Abraham and Father God did you see Lazarus as father in heaven? So decide how to go to heaven. You go like Abraham. In Jesus name. Yeah. 
So I believe God today that God will give you an encounter with his word. Another way you receive encounter from heaven is through heavenly vision. Say with me, heavenly vision. Talking about Moses that earlier talked about. In Exodus 3, 7 to 10, remember, God said, I've seen the affliction of my people that are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster, for I know their sorrows. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land unto a good and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. But what do we see? It was Moses God sent. God appeared to him. That encounter changed levels for Moses. Paul said in Acts 26 verse 19, whereupon O King Agrippa was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. It was the heavenly vision God showed to Paul that made him to turn from a killer to a deliverer. Encounters of destiny. But what does encounter with destiny connote? Number one, assessing new levels in life and destiny. Assessing new levels in life and destiny. Now, you agree with me that life is phase. Life is in phases. So experiencing positive change of levels in succession is vital for destiny fulfillment. Experiencing positive change of levels in succession, not that you got it today and then the next one in 10 years. No, in succession is vital for destiny fulfillment. Deuteronomy 2, 2 to 3. And the Lord spoke unto me, saying, Ye have encompassed this mountain long enough. Turn you not to all. Somebody is going not to all from now. <laughs> Turn you not to all. That's advancement. That's progress. You have encompassed this mountain. You have moved around this mountain. You have stayed in this spot long enough. It's time to make progress. Micah 2.10 Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with sore destruction. Say with me, God forbid. And I forbid. So all this are we, are we, are we, are we, are we, are we marry. I will build. I will go back to school. I will write professional exam. I will learn to drive. I will learn a new language. I will learn a new skill. I will start my business. When will you do it? When will you start? We have had the story enough. When will you start? You want to build? Go and harass the ground with some gravels and some sand there first. I talk like this someday in Osaka, and somebody tried it. Only twenty thousand he had. Before you know it, he became a landlord. In my place, they used to talk uh, you know, an adage, a local adage. Let me just try to see how I can put it in English because some of these things you can't put them in English. <laughs> they said that you can only move around a pepper tree. Hmm? Or shrub. You can't climb it. Is it true? Can you climb it? You'll be moving around now. Now look for something to climb. You need to go forward. Until Zacchaeus climbed the sycamore tree, did he see Jesus? You need a change of level. God told the Israelite to move not one. For Elijah, God told him, move his word. May God give you direction that will put you into a destiny encounter. Yeah. And look at that story in 1 Kings 17, verse 3. Get thee hence and turn thee his word. Somebody may be not one, another it may be his word. That's why you should not judge your life with that of another. You are running different races. Your destiny is not the same. You don't have anybody to envy. Your destiny is not the same, sir. Your destiny is not the same, man. Run your own race. Work out your own salvation. Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Judah. And he was in that brook enjoying supernatural supply. Ravenous birds We are giving him food to eat <laughs> That must be God Because they don't share their food with any The brook was supplying him water It was like a paradise In the midst of famine But the day came the brook dried Look at what God said to him Verse 9 to 7 
verse 7 to 9. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded the widow woman there, there. God is the God of here or there. I have commanded the widow woman there to sustain thee. Now that the brook may seem to have dried, why are you still remaining in the brook? If you stay in the brook, when the brook is dry, you will dry with the dry brook. God is the author of your destiny. Follow his direction. Somebody is there. Maybe the brook has dried. You are still considering the irreparable past. See what I lost. See this world. See that world. Those who consider the past pass away with the past. Hear this. If you see a man driving you, and instead of facing the front, he's turning back to face the back. Won't you drop? That's an accident going to happen. <laughs> God gave your eyes in front so that you can look ahead. If God wanted you to be looking behind, you will put one at the back and one at the front. Remember ye not the former things, he said. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. So stop considering what you shouldn't consider. Begin to consider what you should consider. There are better heights. There are better levels. There are better territories. There is still a place called there. It doesn't matter what you have achieved. It doesn't matter the greatness you have achieved right now. There is still a place called there. Don't be a local champion. Paul said, this one thing I do. I forget the things that were behind. I press for the things that are before. So that I may get the price of the high calling. There is something waiting for you there. Why are you encompassing the mountain long enough? Hear me. There are things if you don't do today, you may not be able to do it tomorrow. You may even want to do it tomorrow, but strength won't be there to do it. So you better wake up. Help me tell you, never wake up. Destiny is beckoning on you. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Your destiny is too loaded for you to fail. <laughs> I pray for someone here today. From today, in this destiny encounter service, you will begin to play in the global level. <laughs> Abraham, from a local man, became a global man by encounter from the word of God. Leave your father's house and I will bless you. I will make your name great. And he departed. One encounter with destiny made Abraham an institution. Made him generationally unstoppable and eternally relevant. I pray for you that from this destiny encounter service, your life will never remain the same. Amen. What does encounter with destiny connote? Number two, reversal of the irreversible. Reversal of the irreversible John 11 39 to 44 Jesus said take ye away the stone Martha the sister of him that was dead said unto him Lord by this time he stinketh for he had been dead four days which means case closed Jesus said unto her said I not unto thee that if thou would believe thou should they see the glory of God the same thing God is saying to someone here today if you can believe you see the glorious destiny he has for you then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said father I thank thee that thou hast had me and I knew that thou heareth me always but because of the people who stand by I said that they may believe that thou hast sent me and when he thus had broken, when he had thought, when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. The irreversible was reversed. 
bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin Jesus said unto them lose him and let him go every time destiny every altar destiny I command you to be recovered today in the name of Jesus whatever monastery spirit manipulating powers every form of destiny killers and destroyers night and day exchangers misfortune projecting demons I command you to be paralyzed every covered or buried destiny is resurrecting now oh I don't know what they've used to cover you they took the stone and covered the grave of Jesus so that he will not rise up <laughs> but what happened the angel came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it so that nobody will roll it back hear me every stone they've used to cover your destiny I command them to be rolled away every spiritual cobweb manipulating and defiling spirit they've used to monitor and make your destiny known and void I command them to be rolled away every chain of bondage they used to tie your destiny anytime you want to lift your head they draw you back I command you to be broken in the name of Jesus today I command the irreversible to be reversed you are three children but they never allow them to amount to anything I command their destinies to take shape now hear me look at the children of Israel in Exodus 1 7 to 12 there was a Pharaoh that knew no Joseph may you never encounter the Pharaoh that knew no Joseph <laughs> and this Pharaoh said let's be wise let's deal with these children of Israel let's increase their ta task the task must sustain you in your life as expired today I don't know that strong man that strong woman that occulting man that power that be that connection that using to call you down I decree the task must sustain you has expired and they increased their task but the Bible said in verse 12 the more they afflicted the children of Israel the more they multiply destiny is stronger than cause <laughs> the more they afflicted them the more they multiply now hear me the more they try to cover you the more they try to stop you they've seen your skills they've seen your intelligence they've seen what you can do but because of if you don't the complex they think that maybe if they take you, you will lose, they will lose their job <laughs> now hear me the more they try to stop you the more you will succeed the more they try to break you down the more you break through the more they want to make you fail the more you obtain better testimonies the God of heaven will establish your destiny but you see pressure people of God faith is our victory weapon in the kingdom of God 1 John 5 4 for whatsoever is born of God whatsoever not whosoever whatsoever which means animate and inanimate thing. whatsoever is from God overcome make the war this is the victory that overcome the war even our faith so our faith is a victory weapon it is with faith we obtain good reports in the kingdom for by it the elders obtain good reports hebrews 11 2. without faith it is impossible to move god to obtain anything for you hebrews 11 6 for him that comes to god more believe that he is and he is the reward of them that lives this king for without faith it is impossible to please god if you like put it to move him to action your weeping cannot move god only your faith can move him 
but we need to know what is in the spirit of faith what is in the spirit of faith number one the spirit of faith empowers us to follow god and his word fully the spirit of faith empowers us to follow god and his word fully numbers 14 24 but my servant caleb because he had another spirit with him and had followed me fully him will i bring into the land where unto he went and his seed shall possess it he had another spirit that was the spirit of faith because we know this spirit of faith has always been the same from ages past the spirit of faith has always been the same that's what the bible says you must endlessly contend for it jude verse 3 you must endlessly contend for this spirit of faith what is in the spirit of faith number two the spirit of faith clears all barriers of our path of destiny there is no destiny that will not be contended against by the devil great and effectual door have been opened to me but there are many adversaries first corinthians 16 9 if the devil can contend with the destiny of god by taking battle to heaven your own throne is too small for him to battle so there is no dev, dev, destiny the devil will not battle but faith has been given to us as an instrument to stop and quench whatever the devil offers ephesians 6 16 taking the shield of faith we are which you shall be able to quench all not some as the devil he knows all the fiery that's of the devil that's why every attack of the devil upon your life is not because of you it's because of your faith he knows that if you are in faith you're a dangerous man so whatever I've been contending with your faith you know jesus said i pray for you peter because the devil has desired to see if you as a weight that your faith fail not i also pray for you your faith will not fail whatever is contending with your faith will contend with them many a time he tried to show you things that are not working but if you look carefully many things are working you know some people come to me and say pastor nothing is working at all i say okay you're a liar your mouth is working your leg is working your hand is working everything is working he will show you the things that are not working because you didn't eat one day he said nothing is working there are some people who have the food to eat their intestine can't they digest it what are you talking about he has done all things well. Say with me, I have done all things well. <laughs> so with faith, you quench all the fear that that's on the devil. That's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. When the king threatened them, and said, I'm going to put the fire to power seven. He doesn't know that the power seven is the power of God. The fire of Uncle Nebo turned to the consuming fire of God. And he consumed the fire, made it AC. Daniel 3, 13 to 18, remember. He said, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Our God who we serve is able to deliver us. Did God deliver them or not? God works with people who walk by faith. As a matter of fact, faith brings you to the realm of God. For with faith, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. What is in the spirit, what is in the spirit of faith? no one can possess his possession without the spirit of faith at work no one can possess his possession including your destiny without faith being at work numbers 14 1 to 6 we saw the story of caleb because the another spirit was in him and the bible said all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried those are doubtful people fearful people but, and the people wept that night and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto, unto them would God that we died in the land of Egypt or would God we have died in this wilderness wherefore had the Lord brought us unto this land eh, to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey we are, we are even better for us to return to Egypt and they said over to another let us make a captain and let all return into Egypt. Can you imagine human beings? Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. But my servant Caleb, because, verse, verse um, 24 now, 
But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and had followed me fully, will I bring into the land whereon, whereon to he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now look at verse 30. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwelling, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. Out of the twelve of them that went to search for the land, ten brought evil reports. And to show you, when you are, fear, when you are fearful, you speak bad grammar. They say, we'll be no able. They started broken language. We'll be no able. But Caleb and Joshua said, we're able to take the land. And they possess the land. Only two of them entered. You will enter your destiny. So faith will make you enter your destiny. Fear will make you lose it. Make a choice. Hallelujah. Quickly, as I close in this service. How then do I experience an encounter with destiny? To experience an encounter with destiny, one must be one spiritually minded. Be what? Let me tell you, never be spiritually minded. To another one? Yes. If I tell you to choose between life and death, you will choose life, obviously. But anytime you are carnally minded, you are choosing death without knowing. Romans 8 6. To be carnally minded is death. But the spiritually minded is life and peace forevermore. So be spiritually minded. Why do you need to be spiritually minded? If you operate with a natural mind, you can't comprehend, you can't receive, you can't articulate, you can't understand, you cannot get what heaven is saying. 1 Corinthians 2.14 but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually the same. You tell him, he says you're a Jew man. He doesn't understand. You tell somebody now to pay your tithes. He doesn't understand. Tell person, give prophet offering. He doesn't understand. Tell person, give your faith. He doesn't understand. Tell somebody, pray. Go and win soul. They don't understand. Eh? A whole big man like you, why should you be? You no, know, sometimes when people see me on the street, they pass on you too. You are on the street. I tell them, am I not a child of God? Before I became a pastor, I was a child of God. And I'm still a child of God. Glory to God. It's because they don't understand. I discover any time I do such things, I, the, the level of blessing changes. It's a question of understanding. So you must be spiritually minded. All this gossip, gossip, offense, bitterness, that blocking your access. But the thing heaven is saying. Number two, be committed to praying kingdom advancement prayers. Be committed to praying kingdom advancement prayers. You can't have the kingdom of God and the interest of his kingdom at heart and God leave you behind. You want to be a key player. You want to be a global player. You want to be in the forefront of partakers of what God is doing. Be also in the forefront in advancing his kingdom. Now we know the story of Nehemiah. In Nehemiah 1 11, you see the story in Nehemiah 2 1 to 10. Nehemiah heard of the broken walls of Jerusalem. He started crying and fasting and praying until help came for him. I called Bearer to the king, but he was able to obtain favor from the king and they went to build the walls of Jerusalem. Now, hear this from a cup bearer. Nehemiah became a governor. In Nehemiah 5 verse 14, he became the governor of Judah. Why? He took the interest of the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. He was praying for the kingdom of God. He was praying for the nation of Israel. Have you not heard? Pray for Jerusalem. Right? Because they were prosperous that love her. You can't be a man, a woman that is given to praying kingdom advancement prayers and then you'll be left behind. Number three, remain in love with God. Remain in love with God. May I please ask you this question? Do you love God? You are sure? Then why is it that you don't love the thing God loves? Love Him. Now hear me. Anybody you love, you will not be afraid of being in the presence of the person. Ask married people that I love. The man travels, the woman is asking, when are you coming back? He just left too. 
You can travel from here to Lagos just to behold the face of somebody you love. And there are some people in your neighborhood, they even greet you say, I beg. So if you love God, you will love his presence. You will love being in church. You love being in church. David said, How am I at that tabernacle? So God. You, 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 you will love to. He said, I was glad when they said, Let's go to the house of God. Not that you are dragging your feet. Your children are reminding you that you don't go to church. Mommy, be like, say it on the backslide. No. And you see, knock the head. Junior, where is my Bible? I kept it here. Where, where did you, only on Sunday you remember your Bible. <laughs> you always like to have fellowship with who you love. You always like to give to who you love. You will like what if you love a lost football, you will just naturally love football. God loves souls. Why is it that you're not giving yourself to soul winning? He that for God so loved the world. He that created the world loved the world. He loved sinners. That he paid the ultimate price for them. If you love God, you obey his commandments. <laughs> because his commandments are not grievous. Hallelujah. Are you sure you're a lover of God? Now hear this. Why must you remain in love? First Corinthians 13, 1 to 3. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have no charity, I become a sounding brass or a thinking symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be born and have no charity, it profited me nothing. Which means anything you do outside love does not profit. You can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. As women, they understand better. The faith we are talking about, this almighty faith works by love. Without love, your faith is impotent. Don't you know, the depth of your love determines your height in life. Never forget this. Galatians 5, 6, faith that worked by love. Without love, faith cannot work. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man. What God has prepared for them that love Him. All things work together for good to them that love God and they're called according to His purpose. Rise on your feet. Love is the master key, sir. <laughs> it's the master key. It's the master key. The faith that works, works by love. To see destiny fulfilled, you must also keep your faith at work, be steadfast in faith, and keep rejoicing always. Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. The fig tree may not blossom. Pomegranate tree, the palm tree. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. You many men, you many men, I am Jah. You many men, oh so love waka. You many men, Baba. You many men, I am Jah. You many men, oh so love waka. Rejoicing strengthens your faith. Rejoicing strengthens your faith. To fulfill destiny. No matter what you see, in as much as the joy of the Lord is there, then your strength is in place. Anything that steals your joy has stolen your strength. Get understanding. Now, before we pray in this destiny encounter service, I want to give opportunity to everyone that is not born again. John 3 3 said, Except you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. See. I want you to imagine something. How far can you go trying to show an unborn child a moving car? When will the child see it? The same way, if you are not born again, you can't see anything. Even if God is showing you, you see your destiny, you can't see it. 
You can't see it. You can't see except you are born again. So don't think it's religion. I'm coming to church. You can be in church and not be in touch. If you are here, you are not born again. This is a door of salvation. Put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody is here. You gave your life to Jesus someday, but you have taken it back. You can return to him. He will return to you. Rededicate your life to him right now. You know, no joy, no peace. Come back to him. He will come back to you. Put your hand on your chest. Pray the prayer of salvation also with me. Maybe you are struggling with certain evil habits. You are confused right now. You don't even know what to do. Return back to Jesus. Let him break that yoke over your life. Please give him your life. If you're among this category of people I mentioned, put your hand on your chest, pray this way, say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. Forgive me of my sins. Give me a new beginning. Do the new thing you have planned for me. Let your cancer for me stand. From my heart and with my mouth, Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I return to you, return to me. Write my name in the book of life. Wash me with your precious blood. Thank you, Jesus. For saving me, I'm born again. Your grace has found me. Let your grace keep me to the end. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please, you pray that prayer with me. Wave your hand to Jesus wherever you are. Wave your hand to Jesus. You pray that prayer. Please carry your bag, your Bible, whatever you come to church with. Go to the front of the now. Please, come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Lord, I gave you my heart. I gave you my soul. I live for you alone every step that I take every moment I'm away Lord I have your way Lord I give you Elisha desired it. And when he came back from that encounter, in 2 Kings 2.15, the other sons of prophets recorded that the spirit of Elijah got rest upon Elisha. Desire the spirit of faith at work in God's servant. The apostle over this commission. So as we pray today, let it be part of your prayer point and desires. And our main focus of prayer here should be, Father, reverse the irreversible and give me a memorable encounter with destiny today. Impart me with the spirit of faith for dominion. Father, reverse the irreversible. And give me a memorable encounter with destiny today. Impart me with the spirit of faith for dominion. Go ahead and pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask of you. Reverse the irreversible in my life. Give me a memorable encounter with destiny today. Just like you gave to Abraham, just like you gave to Jabez, just like you gave to Jacob, just like, oh Lord, you gave to Elisha. I desire the spirit of faith at work in the apostle over this commission, which was David Rebo. The spirit of faith that built the faith that brought the Corona one year. Lord, I need that kind of faith. Impart me with the spirit of faith for dominion. Reverse the irreversible. Give me a memorable encounter, oh Lord. Give me the spirit of faith at work in this commission. Father, let the spirit of faith answer to me. Now for all of you, if I touch you, move towards my right, move towards my right, move towards my right. You are blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed. Please move towards my right. You are blessed, 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 you are blessed. Father, give me the spirit of faith at work in this commission. Just like Elijah received the spirit of faith at work in Elijah. I receive the spirit of faith at work in Bishop David O'Neill. Father, I receive an impartation of a higher dimension of the spirit of faith. This spirit of faith that speaks, this spirit of faith that clears obstacles, I receive it. 
I receive the spirit of faith. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I command the spirit of faith to be injected into you. Every obstacle to your destiny stand cleared in the name of Jesus. God's original purpose and intent for your destiny will stand. From now, receive seeing eyes and hearing ears. When God speaks to you concerning the way to go, you will not miss it. You will not miss road in the journey of life. In the name of Jesus. Every desire that has been dropped here become a testimony right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, open your hand and satisfy every desire that has been lifted here. Let these testimonies be heard on this altar. To your name, we give all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name.